The resurrection that brings us, takes us from this mortal body into the immortal body. And I just want to add, maybe I will just wrap up on this here because you can't talk about resurrection without Romans, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 17, 15, it says here, and it says here, uh, verse, verse 42, So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. See the difference. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. Hallelujah. It's sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Hallelujah. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. So, <coughs> the scripture uses the word sown. <coughs> because when you, when you sow a seed, it comes back. Alright? It comes back and it bears fruit and it's actually better than it was before. Only God can uh, explain that, how that works. Right? <laughs> Only God can explain how that works. It's better than it was before. But these are natural things anyway. Okay? These are natural things because when you sow a, a, a grain of corn, it doesn't come up as, um, what do you say, as an orange. It doesn't come up as something else. It's going to come back as corn. Right? <coughs> excuse me. But we as children of God, excuse me, who are sown by the sun, are coming up back as angels. Right? Coming up back. When I say coming back, I mean you come up back as a man, but you're changed to be as angels of God. So, this is a glorious thing. The Bible says, and in the last verse it says here, it says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, it said, verse 4, 4, 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Right? So all are not going to be in the grave, but all will experience the change. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, excuse me, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and strength of sin the law. But thanks be to God, who giveth us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Now sometimes people just think that is, you know, maybe in a funeral, the minister would go there and, and read things like this and try to comfort the people. You know, say, well, of course, this person is... Um, is dead, you see him again because he's gone to heaven and all that, which is not true anyway. Because nobody dying and going to heaven. Okay, you're dead. You have to stay in the grave. And I asked somebody that day, I said, if the person is still alive, then why do you need a resurrection? You know, and she said, well, you know, well, you're, that's something to think about. You can't need a resurrection if you are still alive. But do you understand the, the, the trick? This one thing, you know, People talk about these things and they, they, they still don't even understand it. So they talk about resurrection all the day, like every year, as I said, next year, and they talk about resurrection Sunday and all these things. What, what, what are they talking about? Right? Okay? What are they talking about? Right? Um, of course, Christ's resurrection was not on a Sunday anyway, but it would, because when they went to the tomb on the first day of the week, Right? The Bible tells you the tomb was empty. So it must have been before that he was resurrected. And based on the time that he was put in the tomb, right, which is the middle of the week, that he would have to be resurrected on the seventh of the week. But some people said, no, he couldn't be resurrected on the seventh of the week because that's the, sab the Sabbath and that's a holy day. I mean, come on. You know, it's like, you know, it's that baby's born any time, you know, what, what, 
you know, people die any time, any day of the week. I mean, the what, what is it about the Sabbath that a person could be resurrected on the Sabbath? Right? A baby's born, and, I mean, any time they feel like they want to come out, they just come out. You could be in the subway, driving your car, whatever, in the plane, and the baby ready, you could not care, they're ready. God said, time to be born, time to be born. Right? But what I'm just saying to you is that people are caught up with the things that pertain to this, this, this world, right? The Bible, it said here, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, the strength of sin, the law. Something has to be changed, right? And we can't be just caught up with just the baptism and the symbol and the shadow. We have to move on to what is the tree, the actual thing. But even then I said, all of these things, even the corn that's planted in the ground, going to come with a corn. So these are the parables that teach us for us to understand what God is about to do. But it doesn't mean that this is what he's doing. Because what Jesus is doing is beyond all of that. Eternal life is what he has promised. Right? So we talk about resurrection. Let's not just limit it to things that have to do with this life. Because that's, that's not what it's about. Okay, you know, and that's, that's what it's about. And this life will come to an end, and it must come to an end. And you're not going to just die and then you shoot off and gone to heaven, as some people think. These, these things are selfish to the devil, and my dad would say, you know, because it means you never die, as he told Adam in the, in the garden, he said, you shall not surely die. And they talked about transmigration and, and um, what's the other one? And um, transmigration and um, die as a, as a man, come back as a dog and, and all these things, die, and come back as a cockroach and all these kind of things. You know, these things are the devil. Okay? These things are the devil. When you, a person um, um, is dead, you know nothing. Okay? And you need a resurrection. The Bible said, Jesus said, those that are in the grave will hear his voice. John chapter 5. And they will come forth. Some type of lasting life, some type of lasting shame and contempt. And we spoke earlier about those who were going to be resurrected after a thousand years. Those are those for everlasting contempt. They are going back into death, but not the, 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 um, the, the, the grave this time, but into hell the fire. So, when we talk about resurrection, the only time resurrection helps us is when we connect it with eternity. Right? So you don't just die and you just end up in heaven. You don't need a resurrection because you're already alive. You're just moving from one place to the next. Right? So I was in Japan, in, in Tokyo, and I took a plane and I, I'm now in, in, uh, in Toronto. That's not how it works. Okay? And, and, and um, Jesus himself spent three days and three nights in the tomb. He waited until his time came. And he said that it was a sign of Jonah, because Jonah was in the whale's belly three days and three nights. It was not a, a, a comfortable place for him, but he, he was locked up in there. He couldn't leave until the whale spat him out. Okay? So Jesus was in that tomb and he couldn't come out because he had to stay there to fulfill the sign that he himself spoke. So when he came forth, right, at the right season, at the right time, then he came forth. But the Bible said that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over him. That's what we want to get to. Where, I mean, as you said, oh death with that thing, you can and I say laugh at death, but basically, you say like you laugh at death. Death is, you can see that death can't touch you anymore. Right? 